And we've got another back to basics topic today. This time a 555 based one shot or monostable multi vibrator. And that's quite simply a circuit that outputs a single pulse in response to a trigger. Now the reason for doing this, I had a, uh, a viewer ask me uh, if I had ever designed a circuit that simply would do this function. When a 5 volt signal goes low, energize a relay for one second. He had a particular application for this, so I figured, yeah, that's actually a pretty simple thing that could be handled by a monostable multivibrator. So I've built up the circuit on the breadboard here. I can simulate uh, the loss of that 5 volt signal by shorting this wire to ground. And uh, when I do that, we can hear the relay click, and I'm just lighting up an LED on the uh, other side of the relay to indicate uh, that the relay is closed. So we can see the relay is activating for about a second when that 5 volt signal goes away. So let's take a detailed look at the schematic and how this circuit operates. So here's a 555 based uh, monostable multivibrator. Uh, this R and C determine the pulse width that you get out when the uh, circuit is triggered. Uh, so those are kind of critical components to uh, determine what the output pulse width is. Uh, throwing a decoupling capacitor on pin 5, the control pin, uh, is just a good idea for noise immunity, as is putting a uh, decoupling cap on uh, the power supply. Down here on the trigger pin, this is uh, how I'm simulating the loss of his 5 volt signal. I'm simply tying that pin to uh, a 5 volt source through a 10k resistor, and then momentarily shorting it uh, to ground to simulate the loss of that signal. So this would just simply connect to uh, his source for that 5 volt signal that he's monitoring. Uh, the output uh, is just going through a current limiting resistor into a 2N3904 uh, general purpose NPN transistor, which is going to pull current through the coil of the relay, energizing the relay, and thus energizing the load. In my case, the load is a simple uh, LED and current limiting resistor. But uh, in his particular application, uh, that may be something completely different. And then, of course, we've got a diode around the relay coil to prevent that kickback voltage from damaging the transistor. Uh, the only other thing that we do is uh, we're going to tie the reset line on the 555 to 5 volts because we're not going to use that uh, reset line to do anything. So if all you wanted to learn was how to make a, a one-shot with a 555, there's your schematic. You can go off and play and turn the video off now. But if you want to learn how this circuit works in more detail, stick around. Let's take a look inside the 555 and see what's going on. By revealing the functional circuit diagram of the 555, we can easily see how this monostable multivibrator works. So the 555 consists of a little resistor string here, a pair of comparators, an RS flip-flop, and a transistor. The resistor string is simply sets up a voltage divider so that one-third of VCC appears here, two-thirds of VCC appears here, and those are inputs to these two comparators. Upon power up, the RS flip flop is in the reset condition. So that means that the Q output is low, which means that this out is low, the transistor is off, our load is not energized. And the Q bar output of the flip flop is high, which means that this transistor is turned on, which means it's pulling current down through this, this resistor here and kind of saturating the transistor and keeping the uh, capacitor here from charging up. So if that capacitor is not getting charged, this voltage is going to stay low, near ground, which means the output of this comparator is low, so we're not going to reset the flip-flop. Uh, similarly, with the 5 volts applied to the trigger input, the output of this comparator is also uh, low, which means that the flip-flop is not going to change state. So we're sitting here, if we're not triggered, we're going to be sitting in that reset condition. Now if the trigger input is brought down below one-third VCC, the output of this comparator will go high. And we're going to do that with, uh, on the circuit by simply you know, yanking that down the ground. Once that happens, we hit the set on the flip-flop. The Q output then goes high, thereby, tr thereby turning on our transistor and turning on our relay. At the same time, we're also turning off the discharge transistor. So essentially this goes open circuit now the capacitor is allowed to charge up through this resistor and it's going to charge up exponentially and it's going to keep doing that until the voltage on the capacitor reaches two-thirds VCC 
at which point this comparator then goes high and resets the flip-flop. As soon as that happens, the output goes low again, we turn the relay off, and the discharge transistor comes on and quickly takes the charge off this capacitor and brings that voltage back down to the saturation transistor or saturation voltage of this transistor. And again, we're going to sit there until we trigger again. And in terms of uh, component selections, uh, not really critical at all on uh, the decoupling cap on the control pin or VCC. Uh, we just want the product of R and C times 1.1 to equal our pulse width. So that's why we chose those. And generally I, I try to stay away from really large value of capacitors because they tend to be leaky and unstable. So this is a reasonable compromise and in this particular case the actual timing wasn't super critical so that would work fine. On this side here the 10K resistor really wasn't critical at all, just a simple pull up uh, resistor to VCC. Uh, the base uh, current limiting transistor uh, was set to be 470 ohms because that gave me about uh, uh, 10 to 20 percent of the collector current. Okay, we're going to saturate this transistor. You really want the base current to be about one tenth or one twentieth or so of the collector current when saturated. Uh, so that gave me about the right amount of collector current uh, when saturated to turn on this particular relay. So uh, you may have to play with that value depending on what relay uh, you might be driving in your circuit if you're doing this configuration. And then a simple switching diode around the relay coil to keep that flyback voltage under control. So uh, it kind of makes sense that the on voltage is just a little bit greater than RC or the RC time constant. And that's because you may remember from charging a capacitor that um, you, you charge to uh, about 63% of the total voltage in one RC time constant. In this case we need to go to two-thirds uh, of the charge voltage which is about 66.7% so that's just a little bit greater than uh, one RC time constant so that's where the 1.1 comes from. Uh, if you stick around to the very end we'll go through the math of where that came from but let's go take a look at some waveforms on the circuit first. Now because this circuit operates pretty slowly I put the scope in this roll mode so we can watch the voltages kind of march by. Channel 1, the yellow trace is probing the uh, trigger input, so it's set on a 5 volt per division scale. Channel 2 is probing the output pin of the 555. Channel 3 is probing the voltage across the uh, capacitor. Both of those are on a 2 volt per division scale. So if I trigger the circuit, we can actually see what those waveforms are doing. You can see I bounced a little bit when I uh, hit the trigger circuit there. Let's hit it again and pause it and take a look at those waveforms. So we can see once I triggered the input, uh, the output went high, and we started charging up that capacitor through the resistor. This has got an exponential charge to it, and once it reached uh, two-thirds of VCC, then uh, that other comparator inside the 555 reset the flip-flop, turn the uh, output off, discharge the capacitor, and then we sit in that state. So a pretty simple circuit, the waveforms kind of bear it all out. Now another thing to note about this circuit is that once triggered, it won't be re-triggerable again until after it resets. So you'll notice if I hit the trigger a number of times, it doesn't cause the circuit to reset again. So uh, that you're always kind of guaranteed to get that uh, pulse width out, even if the trigger circuit kind of gets hit multiple times. Now there are a lot of other one-shot circuits out there. There's some monolithic uh, one-shots, both in CMOS and uh, TTL technologies. But this was a good, uh, you know, way to take a look at the operation of the 555 timer. I hope you enjoyed the video. And again, if you stick around, the last thing we'll talk about here is a little bit more detail on the math of where that 1.1 times RC came from. Okay, so we'll answer the question of where the 1.1 times RC came from. Uh, for a simple RC network, when you initially apply a voltage, the voltage across the capacitor follows this equation. And uh, so it's just the applied voltage times 1 minus E to the minus T over RC, the RC time constant. Now if we want to figure out how long it takes to get to a specific voltage, we just have to solve for T. So it's just rearranging the equation. And we can do that by, you know, say, dividing both sides by V, that gets us to here. And then we could kind of subtract, uh, you know, move terms from one side to the other to get to this point here. Take the natural log of both sides, and that gets us to the point where we've got 
almost got T isolated over here. We simply multiply both sides by uh, negative RC and we're left with time is equal to minus RC times the natural log of 1 minus VC over V. Now in our case, uh, with the 555 timer, we know that we're going to be charging up to two-thirds VCC. So VC, or the capacitor voltage divided by the applied voltage, is equal to two-thirds. We plug that into the equation here. We have minus RC times the natural log of one minus two-thirds, which is the same thing as the natural log of one-third. And if you plug that into your calculator, uh, you'll find that T is equal to, it's like 1.098, but uh, we round it to 1.1 times RC. So that's where that came from. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, learned a little bit more about how the 555 timer works, and how uh, this monostable multivibrator uh, operates. Thanks again for watching. Comments are always welcome.